house. Michigan is now green and not white. Thank you. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Is it on now? It's on a little bit. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. I woke up this morning with a song in my spirit. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. You, you may not be making a noise, but inside, something's going on. Jesus, 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 Jesus is his name. I think you can say a lot of words of this. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You will sing this at home and get healed. Let's let's run it up a little bit. A little a little higher, baby.
some of our projects went on hold uh, at our local church. This is a side point. We have quite a large building. The auditorium seats 1,400. We've been able to, rob to rest and restore and rebuild our gymnasium, which is a double court gymnasium, uh, a 28,000 square foot educational building, and a 1,400 seat building with no extra offerings or borrowing in the midst of the pandemic. Amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, it's just money. And, and then we needed to repair our sign because we face the freeway. The sign's up there about 50 or 60 feet. It's 10 or 12 feet across. But, you know, the wind blows in Texas a little bit. <laughs> Here's a Texas explanation for wind. When I moved to Texas years ago to Dallas area to plant a church, uh, we were there a few days, and we weren't used to that. California, we're used to the ground shaking, but there's not the wind's blowing. Mm -hmm. And so in, in Paris, Texas, just a little ways from maybe, maybe an hour away, a tornado went through and it completely destroyed 50 or 58 houses, put them on the ground. Wow. And uh, so we dismissed our Sunday morning. Our people gathered, but I encouraged them, look, we can't have a normal service when our brothers and sisters up the road are are out living under trees. We can't do that. So I want you to go shopping for an hour and a half, come back here with blankets and food and whatever. We're going to have a big U-Haul truck, and the deacons and I are going to take it to Paris, to Texas, and give it away. So that's what we did. We drove up there, and uh, there was this, you know, I grew up here in Michigan. We had a lot of snow and blowing around, but we didn't see half the towns go places. I mean, we didn't, see, we didn't have all of that. And, uh, so I was just shocked, and I'm looking around for a Red Cross sign somewhere to distribute this stuff, and I saw a big old chunky, what I thought was a farmer with bib overalls on. I mean, with bib overalls on. <laughs> and he's got a Red Cross button. I thought, well, he's either a donor, but you'll know where it's at. <laughs> so, and he's looking at, all, at the debris field. He's just standing there looking. So we, we pulled the truck back here, and I got up next to him, and it took my breath away. I mean, whole houses, yes, this stuff scattered all, there was one car that was halfway up a tree and all such stuff as that, that goes with tornadoes. And it just, before I could have my mind stop my mouth, I said, man, this is terrible. Now he has his thumbs here and his straps and he's going like this. Yeah, he said, a bit of a breeze went through here last night. <laughs> a bit of a breeze. <laughs> so that's how Texas think about it. So God helped us, and we've grown. We've grown through the pandemic. And uh, but in our work, it's a lot of international work. Two days after we ship 250 wheelchairs to Greece for refugees, Greece locked up. You could be within a half a mile of your house. Beyond that, you need peace, police permission to be on the street. You can be out of your house, but in front of it for one hour. Rex, right the rest of the time, because it's been shut up until just a few days ago, until the first of this month. That's how it's been for 14 months. So we can't distribute anything. We have permission to use City Hall steps, to block the streets, and all that. And we've done a lot of projects like that, and there's reasons for it. It's not pride. It's when the Church of Jesus is a despised minority, and you get public attention like that, all boats rise for the glory of God. So how many understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes there's reasons to get out of public places. And so it was wonderful that the mayor's office, he actually called our local pastor there, and he initiated all that. We didn't have to make any calls, or else it's been happening the last few years. Government loves to be seen doing these kinds of things, and we're happy to have them there as long as we can preach the gospel. Amen. And of course, Greece is largely Orthodox, so to say Jesus is not any offense in that country. Can't happen. You can't do anything in public. You can go to the doctor with police permission, and the store, and that's it. If not, thousand euro fine in dollars. That's about thirteen, fourteen hundred U.S. dollars if you're caught without a police coat and you're on the street. Wow. So we can't distribute wheelchairs. And so all these months went by, <clears throat> nearly a year, and then they decided to pray. And that's a very good thing to do because the Bible says, if you lack wisdom, you ought to call your denominational office and get confused. Huh. No, it doesn't say that. It says, call on God, ask God. Yeah. And he won't say dummy, 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 which means he won't upbraid you. Say, hey, hey, hey. He will give you liberally, which means he will give you more than you need 
to Amen. understand the moment you're in. Amen. So let's run towards God, not some human source. How many know we need God's help these days? Yes. We just need Amen. God's help. And so they called a, a wonderful prayer meeting, and in the local church we work with in Greece uh, are some really wonderful prophetic people who are not helium heads. How many understand the difference between a prophet and a helium head? I, it's a secret. I won't tell you. It's a, it's, a, it's a hidden mystery with God. But helium heads, you never get the truth. You get, I think, I feel, I want. But a prophet says, thus says the Lord. And it comes to pass. Yeah. So they're hearing very clearly that instead of going public, and the Lord spoke to him clearly and said, it was my idea for you to go public and do those things, and I'm going to bless it again. But this time, I want you to invite people to come to you one by one by one. Now, what happens is a great refugee center. You know, if we went there this morning at this hour, you would see lines probably a mile and a half to two mile long. People speaking all kinds of languages, have no documents, have the clothes on their back. A lot are sick, a lot are hungry, a lot have to be carried because they're crippled. They've had legs blown off from Iraq and Syria and Kazakh and Azerbaijan, all these places that are having terrible problems. But 80% of the staff there are born again, spirit filled people. So people that hardly ever heard of Jesus are getting saved, traveling with nothing, but they get him. I mean, you know, he's enough by himself. I said he's enough all by himself. That's right. And, and so they're getting witness to it. We know who's who and all that. So invite them one by one to come to the church offices, which is where all these things are stored. How many of 250 wheelchairs is a heap of wheelchairs? That is a big ship. And so bring your doctor, bring your physiotherapist, uh, bring your people, and they always come with the family. A lot of people have to be carried. And so one by one, they spent a whole hour, one by one, gave them evangelistic literature, told them about Jesus, and because they're in the church offices, the dear friends in Athens have every right to pray for people. Forty people we know of gave the right to Christ getting a wheelchair. Yeah. Three people have been healed. They were carried in and walked out. And then my local friends, because I can't go, I can't even get the country until now, they called and said, we hope you're happy with this. I said, listen to me carefully. In Greek or English, I'm happy, 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 happy. <laughs> Interpret that. I think the brother's happy. I am so happy. And guess what? More important, heaven is happy. That's right. Heaven is happy. That's and right. so they told me, the church administrator, who is a lady that's been with the church since the beginning, she said, Dale, I've been here since the beginning. We've tried all kinds of things to touch the heart of Athens. Five and a half million people live in Athens. And we've had very little results. But this wheelchair thing, has opened up. She said, we've had 20 politicians come here. We've had dozens of doctors. We've had the mayor and his assistant, his first counselor come. We've had the news, newspapers. We've had television come. It's unbelievable. And from the 250 wheelchairs, we have hundreds of contacts. We think it's going to take two years to catch up just with the contacts made by distributing wheelchairs. Yeah. We've never had anything that opened the city. I mean, no compassion will do that. Yeah, right. Passion will do it, and we don't. We don't care. We don't ask you. What do you believe? Are you Buddhist, Hindu, Orthodox, Roman Catholic? Are you this, that? Are you Sunni? Are you Shia? Are you this, that? Are you this? We don't ask any of that stuff. They can be communists, God haters, and everything else. Give them to them anyway, because the Bible says love does not fail. Right. It'll get the person who receives it. Right. So God be praised. It's been done. I can't wait to go. I was going to go in a couple weeks, but I think we're going to wait till August now, just so things are more open. And we can visit everybody and lots of institutions as well. We did another shipment at exactly the same time, and uh, I'm happy to tell you we don't have any debts. Uh, we're in the midst of raising 10000 to refresh our budgets a little bit, and we started that a week ago Monday. When I left home Friday morning, we were already 40% to that. So it's coming. We thank the Lord for it. Money doesn't come to me. Whatever I received here today, I don't, for me, it's none of that for me personally. It's all going to those needs. And uh, there's places that can be touched. And God said, I'll give you nations for your inheritance. Not just villages, but nations. Can you believe for that? Yeah. Not just villages. So we have to pray bigger and think bigger. And uh, we're believing God now for, for cities to turn to God and be impacted by the gospel. So he sent another sh shipment to West Africa, the nation of Liberia. Uh, if we met the needs for people with amputations alone, leg amputations in Liberia, 
we would have to send 60,000 wheelchairs just to Liberia. 60,000. Did you hear that number? Not 6,000. 60,000 wheelchairs. Because Liberia had a 14 year civil war, and uh, under a man named Charles Taylor, who was in prison for the rest of his days, and he didn't. Well, he killed a lot of people, he and his men, but more often, if you were the enemy, which means a different tribe than his, for a man, he'd cut off your right hand and your left leg. Ah. If you had any sons, both of their hands, little kids, were chopped off. There are hundreds of thousands of people that have amputations. So we just sent one container lot, which was all I had at the time, and we sent those, and uh, the same kinds of things happened. The pastor we work with there has either the first or second largest church in the country. And he called me almost in a panic. He said, Dale, it's unbelievable. I've been asked to visit with the vice president that would be of the country. This is over wheelchairs. When the Bible says God will make a way in the wilderness, do you ever process what that might look like? There are no highways in the wilderness. It means where there ain't no way, God's a way make curse. That's right. Do you believe that? Not only a, a, a sand track for animals, but a way you can run semis down the thing. Mm -hmm. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. And this brother called me and he said, it's unbelievable. The government social agencies came here to visit me, a whole band load of people, and said, how come you didn't tell us? He said, because you stole all of them. That's why. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't call you. Why are you calling? Because we have an immediate need just here in the capital city of 5,000 chairs. Will your partners provide those? He said, I'm calling. I said, we can't ship that many at once, and I probably wouldn't ship that many in one country unless there's some big prevailing reason. He said, I cannot believe it. This is my country. I live here. I pastor here. He said, never have we had so much opportunity to touch this land because of one load of kindness. We deliver in all nine states of Liberia, so God willing, we'll be there over American Thanksgiving to revisit that whole thing. I haven't seen any of them. I mean, I know what chairs go, but I haven't been there to visit. But I trust this brother very much. Listen, folks. <clears throat> Everywhere on earth, the kingdom that has the name Jesus on it is growing. Yeah. It's not shrinking. It's growing, and in some places, <laughs> exponentially. And I think from my research and those that help me with research, the largest revival in terms of in-gathering of people to Christ, drawn to Christ today, is going on in Iran. Oh, really? Not South America now. They've had a movie for years. It's in Iran, probably followed by Indonesia. Wow. Now you process that. On the edge of a city dump in Jakarta, this morning, which is already passed over there, they're at nighttime by now, one man preached his congregation is more than 10,000 people in the biggest Muslim nation in the world. Is there any amens in here? Amen. Amen. I hope I'm in the right church. Yes, yes sir. I thought I was preparing for Lakeshore House, but I'm not sure. Amen. Or Ann. Yes, you folks didn't do the charismatic communion, Ann. You changed while I've been gone, Ann. Come on, Ann. I'm in a church full of people that are still happy they're saved, and I hope I'm in another one of those. Well, I want to preach a little bit because I've come a long way to say something, so I probably should say it. <laughs> and plus, you know, at noon, reform people are going to have all the chairs at the restaurant, so we're going to <laughs> so, God bless their lunch floor. Just save some for us when we get there. We're going to get to some scripture. We're going to read in John's Gospel, chapter 16, beginning at verse 7. At verse 7, just a little bit. So find John 16, and we're going to come there in just a little bit. Let me give you some backdrop to this because like Pastor has been saying he's camping in 1 Corinthians has been speaking to him. I've been camped on John 14 to 17 for about the last three and a half months. Every day in my devotions I read these four chapters. And as long as they're talking to me, I'm going to stay right there. I don't know how long that is, but I'm going to, I'm going to stay there. How many of you know you can read the Bible and it not speak to you very deeply? And there's other days when you open the page and it's leaking. And it grabs you here, not just your head. So what I'm going to bring you is part of one of my devotions. Part of it, just part of one. But let's start here. Uh, 
In all of the Bible, there's not much said in detail before the coming of the Holy Spirit. Not much. There's some headlines, but there's not much detail at all. Uh, lots of times, because God does work with mysteries, he unpacks them eventually, but he has to keep some things from us. Like uh, when my kids got about 11 and 12 years old, my board was very kind to me to let me keep mileage from the airline mileage programs. So I've flown a lot of miles, lots of miles. <laughs> and I have a traveler's disease called gluteus rectangulus. <laughs> now you can sort out yourself what that diagnosis is, but you have a body part on which you set and mine is shaped like an American Airlines plane seat. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it means, okay? I have A here and A here because of so much flying. So I was able to take my children with me one at a time. I could not tell them. They all had passports and all that. But I couldn't tell them until maybe one day before because you couldn't stand the ruckus in the house. Dad, what are we doing? What are, what's that place like? What are they eating? Oh, oh, oh. Do they have a McDonald's? They, listen, there's McDonald's poison all over there. Do you have this? Do you have that? And I, don't, yeah, I mean, as a parent, you couldn't stand it. And sometimes I'd write them a code. I'd put on their napkins at the table. QF7. That's Qantas Airlines flight set in Los Angeles City. What is that? you got to figure that out. Go on the computer. And they'd be up till midnight, see the light on in the room, trying to figure out, calling their friends, what is QF? That's some code for something my dad did. It's a secret. What is it? And the morning of, you're not going to school today, son. We're going to the airport. Really? Where are we going? Well, we're not, we're not going to New York. Have we worked out that QF7? Well, look here. What, what's this? Dad, that's a plane ticket. I know. It's my ticket. See what it says on there. QF7. That says Sydney. Australia. Guess what? Here's one with your name on it. Well, all of you know what broke loose all the rest of the day until we went to the airport. So God's a little bit like that when he's unleashing huge things because he knows the people he created can't take too much heaven in one dose. <laughs> hmm? Don't pray in here. Oh, God, I love you. Give me everything you got. We're doing fuels for free, but we don't want to get into that. He's got glory for us. That's where we're going. So God does things like this. Isaiah 28, down in the middle of a chapter about judgment. With a stammering look and unknown tongue will I speak to this people. And this shall be for you refreshing and rest. And then the judgment takes back up again on you. What is that? No explanation. Luke 24, 49. Emmaus Road situation. Jesus has joined the party. How many know he's talking to these guys that left Jerusalem 15 minutes too early? They're walking, and they're, they're fueling one another's depression. So you ought to be careful when you leave a church service, especially if God's home. The best is always at the end. Always at the end. And you miss that if you chase off someplace. Listen, have another blessing in the anointing. It's better than any cherry pie here in Holland, Michigan. Right. It just is, and that's the real life on it. It's just better to get something from God. Amen. And healthier, too. Lord. Jesus said to those on the Emmaus Road this, you go to the city and you stay there until you're endued with power from on high. No explanation. Period. Right there. Nothing. What does that mean? Acts 1, it repeats it. It says something a little different. But it's the same thing. Acts 1 and 4. Go to Jerusalem. You stay there until you receive the promise of the Father, which he said you've heard from me. You've heard about this. What? doesn't explain. Nothing explains. So I want, I want to, I'm throwing you a challenge here. And then on the day of Pentecost, there's wind and there's fire and there's shaking and there's bracket. Can you pray beyond your current experience with faith? Yes. Yeah. For something you've never seen before? I'm challenging you today, a friend of this house, to start praying for what you have never seen before. You know why? God's always safe. He's not going to throw you a curveball somewhere and hit someone in the head with it. But if we pray and seek Him honestly, He's going to send what we have need of, contextualized for the moment we live. He's always timely and appropriate in what He sends. He doesn't send something that's not usable, not acceptable, not receivable. He's going to send all of that for this moment in time. In other words, we don't need another Azusa Street. We don't even need another charismatic movement. Why? 
That's been poured out on the earth and it's aged and seasons. We need a 2021 moving of the Holy Ghost that yes, is today. Right. Now we know God's got it. Right. So there's not much lead up at all. And then the last thing he says before the day of Pentecost, and you just stay there. You, you just stay and pray. And so they pray 10 days and nights, we understand. And then Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, and let me tell you, Pentecost was a very long, it was hundreds of years old, had nothing to do with wind and tongue speaking and fire and smoke and shaking buildings. It had to do with agriculture. It's like the annual harvest festival where grain is cut. Thank you, God. And then they'd bring some handfuls of grain to the priest. They'd make two loaves of bread, meaning Jews and Gentiles are now going to become one flesh. And they had a heave off. They threw it up in the air and would catch it before God. We thank you that this is the promise and the fields are full of grain. Thank you for what's coming. Little did they realize God was going to convert something very natural and human and of long practice into something called a church. There wasn't any until that day. They didn't have a clue what in the world. And what do you do if you look around and nobody's speaking your tongue or their tongue? They're speaking some other kind of tongue. That had never happened before. And there was a mixed response because not all religious people have discernment. Some said, what is this? What are we not? What is that? I know that person. They are not smart enough to even speak their own language to say nothing to somebody else. <laughs> and maybe they were speaking 15 or more. How many nations are listed there? And we hear them speaking, these people, the mighty deeds of God in the languages to which we were born. Not them. So there's a miracle in the mouth of the 120 and there's a miracle in the ears of those who are listening. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which were hundreds. Peter won 3,000 that day, so that would be more than that to, to hear what was being said. So we don't have a lot of detail. You know, I've traveled a great deal in my life, and I've learned some lessons to preserve my marriage. When I got home from a week's trip, or two Sundays and the Saturday before, and my wife picked me up at the airport hundreds of times and would say, honey, how was your trip? She did not want me to say, fine, good. She's a lady. Ladies don't like headlines. They want the nitty, 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 nitty. <laughs> Who did you see? Anybody can say it. Were there any miracles? Where did you go? How was my blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So we finally negotiated a truce that kept us married 46 and a half years till she went to her reward. And it was this. We didn't talk about my trips until Tuesday. Because when I got home, it was off at noon or in the afternoon, and the first people who wanted to see me were white kids who had, excuse me for being plain spoken, verbal constipation. They were just plugged up with a week's experiences and story. Oh yeah, brr, brr, brr. and they were talking over one another. So Mondays we dedicated, we went out to eat, and I just listened. Let them vent all the week's stuff, the soccer games, the blah, 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 blah. But Tuesday, the kids were in school. Gloria and I were alone, and we were not far from the beach. So through the years, we found little places where we liked to go, and we hunker down in the corner somewhere over coffee, and away we went. I catched up, would cut up, catch up with the love of my life. That sustained our marriage. Sometimes it took the noon to get all the stuff out because my wife wanted details. And I'm happy to tell you, in these chapters is the in-between stuff. Here are the details because if it's in red, who's doing the job? Jesus doing the job. Here we go. Everybody ready for a little bit of stuff? Amen. 16 said, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. Now, I don't want to preach on this this morning, but I want to touch it so I can get out of the way. To grow in God, always something has to go out before something comes in. Hallelujah. There's only so much space in our soul. And for God to put something new in there and deposit more, something has to move and get out. Guess what? It may have been wonderful the last 20 years, but it's got to move. Thank you for your support. <laughs> it's your advantage that I go away. If I don't go, the helper can't come. But if I go, he can come. 
And there's reasons. I won't leave you as orphans. You need someone to continue to help you. He's going to be another one of the same kind as me. That's the word in the original language. If I go, I will send him to you. Verse 8. When he comes. Not if he comes. When he comes. It's not an if. It's a surety. How many know if Jesus said it, it's going to happen? Yes, when he comes, something's going to happen. He will perpetually, from that day until now, speak often and regularly of three things. Of sin, because people don't believe in me. Of righteousness, because I'm going to be gone. And of judgment, because the prince of this world has been judged. Now let's go through this in reverse. The prince of this world has been judged. For the life of me, I've never been able to figure out God's people who want to talk about the devil all the time and all of his activities. I've never, Pastor, I've never gotten used to that or wondered where that fit theologically. Now the devil is whooping me up. What's whooped up is your mind occupied with that. When Paul is writing to Timothy, he said in the last days, times are going to be perilous. It's a wonderful Greek word which means to cliffhang by your fingernails. How many know we might be close to that across the world today? All right? One nuclear device could make a mess of millions of people in a big hurry. Perilous times will come. And here's one of the signs that we're in peril. Men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And listen to this. Listen to this carefully, please. They will be paying attention to doctrines of devils. The sin is not the devil. The sin is paying attention. Remember the writer of this great hymn we sing in America? Oh, say can you see, written in Baltimore Harbor, by the dawn's early light. What's he talking about? The smoke of battle's going on, but Mr. Key saw this. The smoke of battle was clearing, and the flag was still standing. That's it. He's not paying attention to the battle. He's paying attention to how you win it. Keep the flag up there and keep shouting, we're going to win this today, and they did. Amen. And we're not going to win. Well, the devil just made me depressed. Well, where'd you eat last night? That may have had something to do with it. You know. When you put some fast food in the dog dish and they run out of the house howling, no human ought to eat that. When I first married my wife, though, you know, you, you, you have a brand new beautiful wife and you want to please her. You want to please her. So we're married about three weeks, and we bought a house, and we're trying to figure out how to furnish that and, and all the stuff. And, uh, you know, here's my brand new wife, and I'm head over heels in love with her. And uh, usually she'd just back right up to me, and she wanted to be held. So whatever. But this time, she's leaning against me, and she's scratching on me. I said, honey, I know you love me. I said, what's coming here? You know, what is this? You want a car, what's going on here? And she said, you know, uh, my roommate and I, we went to the SPCA and we got a dog. I said, really? And she said, well, really, it's my dog. I said, oh, no. I think I know what's coming. And the strange thing is that the dog pound told us it was a girl, but it's a boy, but we'd already named him Candy. <laughs> now that's a transgender dog. <laughs> Before we had all this, now, that dog didn't even know who he was. I mean, it's over. Just throw the surrender flag up on that. Well, I was like, I don't know, okay. How big is this thing? Oh, this little, you know, it was a, it's a poodle mix of something else. We don't know. But it's so cute, I just love my dog. A boy dog named Candy. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went and got the dog. <clears throat> that dog and I never got on very well. <laughs> so we got the dog bowls and the whole thing to feed dog. And, and, and I'm a dog lover, I am. But here's how feeding went. I feed that dog to half a can or some dry food and put it in there. It wouldn't eat right away. <laughs> With its nose, it pushed that bowl all over the kitchen. 
and it would cook its way to tile floor. It cook, it for half an hour with its nose. It pushed it. It wouldn't eat. It pushed that bowl. I said, Gloria, you got to change that dog's name to Cleburne, Cleburne, or something. But get a meal. That, that that dog is going through a crisis in its head. He knows what he is, but you don't. <laughs> Oh, no, no, the, the name of the paper is Candy, so that's it. Okay. Come on, Candy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then he would eat. So help me, this is the truth. My children here, they're verified. <laughs> he would eat and come wherever I was sitting in the house, come around and get right in front of me and look up and go, <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a shrinking ego. <laughs> The dog wants to vomit on my boots and throw my brand new wife. If you're a man named Candy, you probably have <laughs> What is this? We don't know. Some mocked and said they're all drunk. Why? Because especially Peter, James, and John had been seen that way in prior years. Not unusual to see those. Listen, Sons of Thunder is not a compliment. You know what it means in our tongue? They be homies. And ho chase us. <laughs> so for them to be staggering around, anybody ever heard that word before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's cussing here. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You know, culture it moves around. Pastor and I were down at the singing in Tennessee a few years ago. I've been in 151 nations of the world, maybe two or three more. I had never heard in my life a term I heard, and it shocked me about food. The director's time for a break, and the washrooms are down there, and there's barbecue here, and this and that. And by the way, this and that, run out there and get some hoe cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you were there. <laughs> what kind of stuff is <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be Christian people? <laughs> and he not only didn't hide it, he announced it <laughs> over the public address system. <laughs> I'm an innocent guy with a pure mind. In church, advertising whole cakes? <laughs> I've never, if you're Southern, you probably know it's a pancake made out of corn. I've never heard of such a thing. Down there, they even put barbecue on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> taco, baby. <laughs> when God moves, be mindful. There will be a mixed reaction to it, and here's why. It will offend any unrighteousness that's left in us. That's right. And when right. God comes calling, how many know he's not going to skirt the issue of sin? Right. He's going to touch that first. And if we don't open our hearts and say, Lord, whatever it is, move this wickedness out of me, it's going to resist the flow like stones in a river. It'll stand there because a lot of sins have roots on them that are deep. They don't want to move. That's right. A man called me from Alaska a few years ago. He said, I hear you having great meetings. stuff. I want you to come for a revival. I said, Brother, let's fix up our language a little bit. Because I show up doesn't mean there's revival. If the Holy Ghost shows up, then something's going to move. But I said, I have a question for you. He said, what? I said, what price are you willing to pay? He said, well, how much a week do you need? I said, oh, no, no, it's not an economic question. This is a question about your church. What price are you willing to pay? And he said, well, make it be specific. I said, okay. I have a feeling that most of the men on your board don't even know Jesus. And if he shows up in your church, they're going to want your job. Not a moving of God, because it's going to destroy the nonsense they play outside your church. He said, well, if they left, we couldn't pay the mortgage. I said, you've made your decision. I wouldn't go. Then he calls, oh, well, offer me a huge amount of money. I said, listen. My question to you some time ago was not about money. It's an honest question. If you're willing to pay the price, then let's get together and start praying and see what the Lord will. I'm just telling you, it's going to be expensive in your church because the people around you, I've heard a whisper from heaven, are not righteous. They're not going to go with you. And they're going to want your job because you want a person like you there. He never had it. It cost him. Those men turned on him a year later. Without a revival. 
and booted him out after 14 years of ministry and building a 200-member church to a 700-member church. They got rid of this guy because he started talking about holiness and revival. Oh. Yeah. Let me tell you in 1 John what John had to say about this. We know that many antichrists have arisen. Now listen to what he says. They have gone out from us. The Antichrist not running through the earth. He's sitting in the pews of churches. And what it means, Antichrist means anti-anointing. Anti-anointing. So, when the Holy Spirit comes, how many agree he is come? Yes. So here's some stuff to get out of your brain. Oh, Lord, send the power. Just stop that stuff. The power has not been extracted. It just has never been applied. Say that. Please. Have you got it? Yes. There's been no voice. Come back, Holy Ghost. That hasn't happened. And he's going to be here till the Lord returns. So now the real question is not, Lord, send the power. The real question is, Lord, send the power and give us enough spiritual sense to receive what you're sending. And apply it to righteous living and the salvation of the lost people. Amen. When he comes, he's going to emphasize three big things and not put emphasize it. Now, he's going to talk about sin because the people do not believe it. Uh -huh. Don't believe it. Yeah. So, how many questions about or sermons or words do you hear about sin on all the public ministries combined? Zero to none because it would kill donations. <laughs> Don't hear about that. Don't hear about it. Doesn't mean it's not real, just you don't hear about it. See. Maybe America needs to hear. Yes. We need to repent. Every last one of us, church or not church, yes. we need to repent of our lethargy, our prayerlessness, yes. our thought lives, and our long yard of yes. other stuff, whatever yes. God may show us. Because when he comes, it's exposure central. He knows where the sins are hidden. Mm -hmm. He knows them. Amen. So he's going to speak about that. I really like it. People say, you preach on sin, people would feel bad. I'd rather call that conviction. <laughs> and if it falls on somebody, let it fall. I'll tell you when it's good when people really get saved. When they cry and the snot runs and the mascara looks like a miracle is made down there. That is a real salvation. Amen. But this little feel good, touch on the back of the head, oh God, I'm sorry. Sorry. And then go out and live the same way? Right. Not saved. It didn't take root. It did not get inside. Not saved. Same old habits, same old things. How many know repentance means 180 degree turn? We're going this way, we repent, now we're going this way. That's what it means in the Bible. Repent means to turn around. And then the Bible talks about the fruit of repentance. A life, a life that looks like there's been a change. But just avoiding, just avoiding the, the popular physical sins, public sins, does not make us righteous. So now we have to have righteousness revealed to us. And I'm <coughs> beyond accepting Christ, it comes line on line, a little bit here, a little bit there, <coughs> until God builds Christ likeness in us. That's his goal all the time. And then judgment, because the prince of this world has been judged. Now here's a little grammar lesson. Judged in this translation has an ed on the end and that makes it something called a perfect tense and it's a past perfect tense which means we got to go back here somewhere to find out where that action took place so we go way back here and where was the prince of this world judge somebody talked to him. when did that happen when did the devil when when was the devil dealt with by jesus with finality at the cross and the resurrection. And right. the resurrection. That, all of that together, that burial and crucifixion, ascending uh, syndrome, that whole cycle, that dealt. And, and did he not go to the gates of hell and grab the keys? Well, they, they, the, the entry door to hell, it, the key is now in the hands of Jesus. Hmm? Is that right? Yeah. That is yeah. right. That's what the Bible tells us. Right. He wasn't dead when his body expired. He's looking for the devil. Imagine the devil's shock that the Son of God shows up in his neighborhood. Pretty shocking for him. But he took the keys. And then what did he do? When he was raised from the dead, he became what the Bible calls the saving king. Yes. The royal one who rules over all others. And the Bible says in Greek, it says yes. he was hyper exalted. Yes. Now, when he was ascended and in his public ministry, 
He really, by choice, constrained himself to rule over three or four kingdoms. Illness. No sickness prevailed against his name when he gave a command, including leprosy, which was the worst one of the day. Limbs and flesh grew back where there wasn't any. Pretty amazing thing, right? right? All of that happened because at the name of Jesus, every other name, including leprosy, will bother. It'll, it's, it'll be subservient to the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Death could not hold this guy down. We ought to be glad because yeah. we've lost the people we all love. That's right. But one day there's going to be a great getting up morning, as the old hymn said. You really believe that? But yes, I only really believe that. Yeah. Jesus did it first, so we could. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. I really feel sorry for any mortician. They're going to have no business <laughs> on a resurrection day. Right. In fact, they'll probably all have heart attacks when they see what happens. The people that put it around that are born again. Prince of this world has been judged. Sickness, death, demonic activity, and hell over all of those dominions, because Paul tells us in Ephesians, he has ruled over all dominion and power and spirit. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. He, he, Jesus, the ruling king. So probably the best name for Jesus is Saving King. And why did he send the power of the Spirit? Just so we can speak in tongues? No. So the Holy Spirit is now the enforcer of his kingdom on planet Earth. All right. Amen. 24 hours a day, he's a century on duty. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Has been judged, E.D. over here. And the beneficial effect of that, that term right here that we've read means there's a benefit that started when he was judged and it continues to the present moment and goes out into infinity in the future. Yes. We enjoy the benefit of it now and the benefits continue on to where we can do this. Thank you, Lord. Now, if that be true, and I believe it's absolutely true because that is how perfect dance in Greek and English works. You get a benefit, it's sealed and established, it continues through time to the moment you're in and it goes that way. Honor. It's like this. You pick it up again in Peter's sermon. This promise, it's preaching about the Holy Ghost that fell. This promise is to you, your kids, your grandkids, and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. Here we are this morning. The call. So we're here for benefit collection. That the devil has been whooped by Jesus. Right. Glory to God. That's right. Yeah. Well, the devil didn't beat me up. Stop that. Stop. Because you created an atmosphere in your life, in your house, out of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I'd rather say, this is the day the Lord. that the Lord has made and help me not to screw it up too quick. I will be choice. I will, by intentional choice, I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad. Hallelujah. Part of my Hallelujah. personal devotions, I may have played it too loud in the house this morning, I'm not sure. But I just wanted to get my spirit singing Jesus when I woke up. John's and Bob, we'll South African brothers singing. Yeah. Falling in love with Jesus. Yes. I'm falling in love with Jesus. And the end of it is, it's the best thing I've ever done. He's right. He's <laughs> the devil mad, but it makes God glad. How we know heaven's happy, everything's good. That's right. There's something about singing and praising God as, as the modus operandi of your life. I think people that know me close would say, I have a happy disposition. I think they would say that. Yeah. I'd far rather come down with joy than right. suck up on a lemon face all day long. <laughs> 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 Another service in this place. No, 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 no. You know what you do to your body, releasing all that negative adrenal stuff into your system? Mm -hmm. But a merry heart does good like medicine. Amen, it sure does. Negativity will eat you up inside, but joy will heal you up inside. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, you know, all kinds of
kinds of insects are attracted to honey and they're repelled by everything else. Bring that down to human relations. The prince of this world has been judged. The Lord has dealt him a death blow. He has one more leg on his journey. A lake with very warm ingredients in it. That's his final stop. Say amen and thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm so thank glad you, that's where he headed. And that's what so, so, so. But how many know he'll come around to visit and, and try to get you to pay attention to him? And here's the simple solution to that. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he will you do the resisting, but who kicks him out? Jesus. Here's how to visualize the devil. A big fat devil with a pointy head, a long pointy tail, bull horns on the top of his head, and a neon exit sign on his rear end going away from you. Yes. Amen. Get out of my life, out of my business, out of my wallet, out of my kids, and every other thing. Leave me alone. I'm a son and daughter of God. Blood across my doorstep. Amen. That's my introduction. <laughs> 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 well, let me give you a little more from verse 13. We'll try to tidy this up. When he comes, he will guide you into all truth. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That means there's more to know because he said, I have in verse 12 a lot more to tell you, but you can't take it right now. Why? Two reasons. It's not the right time for you to understand all these other things. And secondary, you couldn't embrace them now because of your level of maturity. How I many know there's some things you have to be 50 years old just to understand the why yeah. in some things? Yeah. You just have to live a long time for some things to make sense. Yeah. And even then, you what? <laughs> but it, 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 sometimes it's just with years that things become more obvious to you. Is that not true? Yes. Yeah. You just have to live a while to to see some things. God said, you're not ready yet, timing's not right, and your maturity level is where, because royal information in the hands of the immature is dangerous. Yes, it is. It's dangerous, it's dangerous. So, the Holy Spirit's gonna guide you into all truth. He won't speak about himself. Whatever he hears, that is in the heavenlies, he'll speak it and he will disclose to you what is to come. I don't know how this affected you, but I'd be, I believe in being plain spoken about the gospel. Amen. We had a presidential election <clears throat> last fall, and depending on how you led yourself politically, everybody could be mad or glad. It's just whatever way you saw. What concerned me more about the politics was uh, the random, quote-unquote, prophetic stuff that was said about that election. It bothered me very much because there were voices of people that I know personally to be godly people, not, not crazy nut nutters, that said, President Trump's going to be here. We've heard from heaven. We've heard from God. Certain television networks were featuring these people one after another. He's going to be our president. No question. It didn't happen. Now let me tell you the damage that that nonsense did with, with a couple of rare exceptions. Anybody from the watching world that's listening to people that were quote unquote men and women of God, we knew they were phonies to begin with. They wouldn't know the voice of God if he yelled at them. Over and over on television, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. A few of those people that I know personally are not unrighteous, they're not prevaricators, and they love Jesus. They not only were wrong, they did horrible damage to the whole idea of prophets. Period. Yes. Who will you now believe? Yes. And the watching world won't believe anybody yes. who said that. But a little preacher in a town of about 100 people in Kentucky started having a bunch of, not a prophetic guy, I said, all I know is this is what I've seen. But I listened to all of his videos, 
Jesus. Because this guy doesn't advertise, he doesn't run around to preach, he's got lots of invites now, but he just, he's pastoring 80 people, and I think he's teaching school to, to keep himself alive. And he said, you know, I see November, and we're going to have the elections, there's going to be a lot of unsettledness in the country. And Mr. Trump is nowhere to be seen. I don't know what that means. He was one of the few that was right. And he wasn't even trying to be right. He right. said, this is what I'm saying. And in November, I can't see the president in Washington. I don't see him. Another man I've just recently met in the middle of our country, known to be a very credible voice. I've followed him for years. He has been so accurate, it's almost breathtaking. Very close to the election. Here's what's going to happen. Didn't happen. One month after the election, I happened to be at my computer, and a text came. It's blanket text. I'm writing to repent. I missed it. I did not keep two verses, two sections of scriptures in my heart, as I had from all other process for 40 years. These were my guiding principles. One of them is out of Jeremiah 23, which says, God says, I don't like your prophets, and here's why. They eat one another. I've heard others, and I've repeated what they said. And secondarily, out of 1 Kings, I don't remember the exact chapter. One of the king was saying to his 400 prophets, tell me, will we win this battle if we go to fight? Yes, O king, you will win. But there was one other guy. Come, and I know you never speak good. What do you have to say? Oh, it's going to be okay. No, 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 don't start that. Tell me the truth. And he said, you're going to die. Now, how many know if you're the one and there's 400 saying something else? It's not easy to speak the truth. But how many know when the event happens? I immediately text that brother who said you repented. I text him immediately. And I said, brother, I'm at my computer. I want to thank you for being transparent and humbling your heart. Now I want to prophesy to you. God's going to honor. You see, it's just like washing feet. You can't wash feet when you're standing up. <laughs> and when you're repenting, you're as high as you can get in the kingdom. Okay? You are. You're as high as you can get. And God's increased his church, increased his ministry, and all kinds of... Well, look, I'm not here beating up on prophets. I've been greatly blessed by prophecy in my own life. I'm not here doing politics. I hope you understand. If those men and women of God had gone to a prayer room and stayed there until the Holy Spirit disclosed what God was going to do, we'd have had a different report. That's what I'm saying to you. Take great care of what you listen to. And be sure you judge it right through these chapters. I hope some of this has been a blessing to you. I'm not sorry that I preach so long. My kids think I preach the everlasting gospel every time. That's why I don't come once a year and can't take it. I just told you what's going to happen when the Holy Ghost comes. And he's still coming. Come on, Holy Ghost, on this church. That's right, bring it. Come, come, come. Bring we it. invite you to come. In your power. For today. For this power. Lord, I bless Lake Shore today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Throw your hands up and give them some praise. Come on. Yes. We bless you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you looked upon your people down through the years and you said, they've got to have the Holy Ghost working among them. They won't survive without my presence there and my power. And you sent your power, not just so we can have gifts and graces, but so your kingdom continues to grow. That's it. Let something happen in this church over these next few months that's never happened before. And I don't know what that is. But when it comes from heaven, it'll be the right thing in the right time. 
Thank you, Lord. Can you dare pray that with me? We thank you for what's coming. Thank you. Come on, we thank you for what's coming. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Jesus. Sing it, Barry. Sing it. 